Hello. For a new challenge, I'm going to see if I can evolve a species in Spore that doesn't have any eyes. Or rather, I won't see, because I won't have any eyes to see anything with. Eyesight, after all, is a burden. Look at all of the things around me that aren't mine. By removing eyesight, we see no evil. No, instead, we will rely on our mouths. Life is hard. We started life as the eyeless. Unfortunately, upon starting the game, you are forced to have eyes. As soon as I possibly could, a new species was created. Smooth and flawless. We face the awkward question of blind people can't see a radius of like five feet around them. I need to be able to eat anything on any side of me and defend myself. The origin of our species was something that would give a child a nightmare. A species that would make Charles Darwin perplexed or even upset at how much of an aberration we were from anything natural. Life is simple as a single-celled organism and all the pressing species-wide questions of extinction and inheritance that we struggle with today are replaced by simpler, more immediate ones such as, what should I eat today? It's a simple life. Throughout the cell stage, literally every other species ran away from me. Or swam, rather. There is no doubt about it. Leaving the eyes off of any creature that you create in sport makes your creation completely and utterly repulsive and hideous. My species looked more like a diagram in a biology textbook. Completely grotesque. Like a cross-section of genitalia used perhaps by your high school biology teacher for pedagogical purposes. My species was hideous, unfamiliar, and unwanted. But when no one else loves you, at least you still have yourself. Or rather, that is, we had one another. Yes, the members of my species may not have had eyes, but they reproduced sexually and they used their sense of touch to complete their arousing mating dances, even at the cellular stage, signifying that we were specialized and destined for very great things. I continued my journey into biological misconception down the road of sightlessness by evolving more mouths in more places that no one would expect a mouth to be located. In real life once, I was reflecting as I stood in a crowded train station and a blind man walked directly into me from behind. His face and his entire body suddenly face-planted onto mine. He was a blind young man, and I imagine it must have been extremely jarring to commute blind, but I feared for his safety, and naturally my mind drifted toward how I might act if I were placed in a similar situation. It's a moment that has stayed with me for many years, and I can't honestly imagine what it would be like to really be blind. I was trying to strategize this with my species, though. To substitute, admittedly sometimes, when I get out of bed in the middle of the night, and it's dark, I used the memorized distances in my home from my bedroom to the bathroom in order to imagine what life of a blind person must be like. Perhaps it's shallow or flawed reasoning, but I like to wave my arms around me like I'm an octopus, feeling about for obstacles that might collide with my face as I step gingerly over discarded debris and furniture lying about my home. So would my species be designed, to walk like I did as an octopus to the bathroom. I used all of this to strategize the dining habits. If I couldn't see the food around me, every bit of surface area would be a mouth. This train of thought continued into the creature stage, where I still couldn't see anything. I think it's safe to say that the creature stage is easily one of the most universally hated, or at least one of my own least favorite phases of Spore. It's an amazing idea, don't get me wrong, but it's also far less satisfying than the cell stage. The cell stage yields satisfaction at more decided, well-cadenced intervals, cause and effect, work and reward. It's incredibly satisfying to be competing with other organisms, then suddenly you grow to Godzilla size and actually outgrow the predator that was just chasing you because you excelled so exceptionally at eating kale with breakneck rapidity. There's just nothing quite as satisfying in the creature stage. You spend hours trying to follow along with other species at landish mating rituals, only to find out that they think you aren't cool or cultured enough to be friends with them. Since I don't support war, and I had begun life as an herbivore, I continued this awful slog far higher into our evolutionary journey than I should have, despite the fact that war was just such a better answer. You might not be able to make friends with everyone, but you can definitely eat everyone. At this point it merits saying, Spore is a dualistic game. Herbivore or carnivore. Life or death. Friendship or enemyship. During this period of time, my species encountered an extreme existential crisis almost every single day that caused our evolutionary journey to be humiliating, engaging, and cathartic all at once. 
That's all to say that it pays to be well decided with what you intend to eat in the future. But you need to be flexible. You can't be a vegan forever. But you might have to be. Did the blindness affect our species? Truth be told, not really. Though it deprived me of seeing the world in oversaturated colors and lush landscapes, which is admittedly probably what makes Spore stand the test of time along with the delightfully inventive game premise, mechanics, and progression. However, I felt a great deal of imposter syndrome that our species was not like other species. We did not have eyes. We were not welcomed by the Ukka, the Boka, or the species known simply by the letter M, which were just a few of the species I encountered on the planet. For this reason, to be cool enough to hang out with other species, we started modeling ourselves after common household objects, like a literal plant or a flower. Who could refuse to befriend a dancing tree? As it turns out, quite a lot of people could refuse this. I had to keep substituting outlandish parts on our species in a search for a final identity, a final agency that would leave us a lasting legacy in the history of time. Like the ugly duckling, I decided that our species was in fact not a second-rate version of some mere animal that walks the earth. No, but rather a first-rate version of an anthropomorphic plant. Yes. A ficus becomes sentient. Finally, we had transcended ugliness and become unarguably cute, while also being absolutely perplexing to gaze upon. Why were literal plants walking around the planet, trying to make friends with every creature upon whom they chanced to pass? I still shudder to think what Spore would be like if it had been an MMORPG, and knowing the gaming community, I would not let my children play for fear of the stupid things gamers would put in. I also lied to you at the beginning of this video. I actually played on normal difficulty, and I said that to be edgy. Overall, I found this experience to be truly worthless, and I would not recommend that you play the game blind. There's almost no advantage whatsoever to playing Spore with eyes, and being blind unfortunately covers only part of the screen in a black gradient overlay. Looking for immersion? What did you expect? A completely black screen? Although it's realistic, it just isn't any fun from a game design standpoint. Why would you do that to people? The creature stage is actually the last phase of the game where being blind is a detriment. After that, the game opens up in color no matter what your species looks like. But it's worth noting that it makes literally no difference if you decide to play as some horribly misshapen, malformed troglodyte, or an homage to a household object, such as a houseplant, or some other inanimate object like a chair. If anything, from this point in time, I'm most enthused to return to Spore about the premise of embarking upon the evolutionary journey of several other inanimate objects that can be found lying throughout the house, and calling them challenges in their own right. Throughout the playthrough, I spent most of the rest of my time collecting fossils, failing to impress women from other species, returning to my own, who would always accept me, running away, and being devoured repeatedly by strong, hungry predators. No one loved me. All of my allies were weak, and I was infamously abhorred across the surface of the planet. Probably the most emasculating experience was when another species that resembled a larger plant than my species killed me in front of my allies, who watched with indifference as I hopelessly accepted my fate. Was I to be subsumed by larger plants of the planet? No. Clearly defeat was unacceptable. I cut my losses with our species and cast aside all of the emotion, personal investment, and creative energy I had poured into making our species resemble a houseplant, and I slowly began breaking out of the standard mold. I was completely fed up with being bullied by other species, and failing to impress the other species into being my allies. We were such tryhards by doing that, and we sold ourselves into a cheap strategy to advance farther into DNA progress. My only friends that stayed with me for the very brief time were weaker than me, and it was humiliating to need their help. I'm truly happy that it's over. I'm still trying to block it out of my memory. As we approached the end of the creature stage and acquired the extremely advanced body parts, I made us turn temporarily into evolution chads at the top of the food chain by shooting venom-like torpedoes at long-range distances at enemies, picking people off, and sacrificing the other members of my species to acquire valuable DNA points. Yes, I had had it up to here with making friends. The truth is that it's much easier to make people hate you than it is to make people like you. Just think about it. You can only have a limited number of friends, but you can have as many enemies as you want. And it doesn't take all of this emotional energy invested into your friendship to maintain, or even, in a sense, nurture a relationship that involves people's contempt for you. I'm not saying that this is a good way to live your life. I'm saying that it's a great way to live your life, and we could take a hint from Spore. 
Why would you waste your time on mating dances to befriend people with overly high standards? Spore is a simulation of hierarchy in class-based societies, where many generations of people keep trying repeatedly one after the other, generation by generation, to change themselves, somewhat like Dr. Seuss's star-bellied sneetches, in order to reach vague status symbols that are highly arbitrary and not necessarily even a good thing, or yielding greater utility for society. Spore is an exercise in futility. Change is hard, but perhaps there's hope for the one species that rises above the evolutionary cycle, like humans have with the new phenomenon of epigenetic evolution. Now I'm getting a little sidetracked. I did a lot of thinking about society while I played this game. I just find that every game I play has this sort of neurotic, philosophical undercurrent that I find more engaging than the actual gameplay itself. I think the longer I create videos, the more I get at that. It's what makes certain games precious to me and keeps me coming back for more. It's an escape from real life, and it plants the seed of a memory that stays with me and which I carry out into the real world that reflects some deeper part of thinking. To me, the blind challenge gets at the heart of what I most enjoy about video games, and it's something similar to what movies offer to their audiences. An escape from real life, albeit more engagingly by taking advantage of more of our brains for increased engagement. The Blind Challenge offered me an opportunity to exploring more of the game's mechanics via scarcity. Games aren't fun when they're too easy. Difficult experiences are more exciting and you learn more from them. I saw, or rather felt, Spore in an entirely different way than I ever had through the Blind Challenge, and completing it made me even more inventive, perhaps, about the game's mechanics, which I imagine will make future challenges yet even more niche, specific, and engaging. To close, I temporarily evolved our species into a buff Chad that shot toxic out of its eye holes, not eyeballs, from afar, and then ran away to obtain help from the other pack members before quickly reverting back into plant form. Call it cheesy, I did what I had to. I had died so many deaths, I had had so many babies, but the most disturbing and perhaps existentially confusing behavior was yet to come. I love Spore because it's an old game and it has many old cutscenes. They're cinematic and they feel more like watching a nature documentary than actually playing a game. The most disturbing behavior of our existentially confused eyeless species was still yet to emerge at the tribal stage. I was aghast as the trees I had created uttered incomprehensible jungle talk, and I stared open-mouthed at my computer screen. Upon reaching this phase, I decided that the blind challenge was complete, having taken it as far as it would affect my species. Once you reach the tribal stage, you can see in color again. So to be fair, your species can look like literally anything at this phase. I will be back. It's exciting to think that you can play as literally anything beyond the creature stage, and it won't affect you whatsoever. Plants are only the beginning. Prepare for a plethora of inanimate objects that I will play as a species. Though next time, I'm prepared for the species to make a more decided stance on the whole herbivore-carnivore issue. And I think violence might be the only good answer here, unfortunately, which is somewhat one-dimensional, but at least consistent in practice. They say you need to find your niche, your special place if you want to survive and thrive, and I look forward to traversing the evolutionary journey of an anthropomorphic pair of scissors, or something like that next. A different video format than usual, though I've been working on a lot of projects in the background, and I'm actually in the process of moving to a different home. Let me know what other spore challenges you want to see and I'll read them with great anticipation. As always, a major thanks to viewers like you. A major thanks to my patrons, for they allow me to see with my eyes. And I'm very grateful. I'm Ambiguous Amphibian. Until next time.